We're doing the 62162 drill day worksheet, and you can see that these problems are formatted to help you better understand the three different ways that you can write a vector. And that's what number one is really addressing, is there are three forms of a vector. There's component form, which is the best form. Component form allows you to graph very easily. Um, it's already starting at the origin, is what component form says, and going towards the direction it's asking you to do. I can give it to you as coordinates. Well, if it's given to you as coordinates, convert to component form. And that's where we learned about the idea that your coordinates, you can think of it as x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, related back to slope. Um, ij form looks intimidating. That's the um, one C down there. But it's not that bad to use. So for this problem, number one, we're going to be given each form. You see a, b, c, all the different forms. Your goal is to translate them all to component, which makes it easier to graph. And once it's graphed, it makes it easier to find the magnitude and the direction. So once we get component form, everything else should be easier. So let's start with A. And since I highlighted component form in purple, I will keep with the color coding. And A, I'm told I have vector R. It goes to the left 3, up 7, negative 3, comma 7, which, by the way, that is my component form. There's nothing I need to do to that. So I'm going to go to the left three. So I'm going to start right here at the origin. That's what component form is good for. And I'm going to go to the left three. And I'm going to go up seven from there. So to the left three, let's draw it out here. And then I'm going to go up three, six, and it's going to go up seven. And I'll straighten it out so it looks a little bit better. So I went left three, up seven. And I'm going to draw it towards that direction. Here is my vector R. That's it. That's the graph of negative 3, 7. Now, the next part says, hey, you need to find, well, two vertical bars. Remember, that's just a fancy way of saying magnitude, which means I need to find the length of that vector. Well, that vector, since I drew it from the origin, allows me to go and draw myself a right triangle. So I'm going to go to the left, 3, and I'm going to go up 7. And notice those make up the sides of my right triangle, which allowed me to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude. So I have c equals the square root of negative 3 squared plus 7 squared. So that would be the square root of 58, which is approximately about 7.6. Good. And so now we have the magnitude. The next part is the direction. And that's the part you need to keep in mind is a little bit trickier for is we need to keep in mind the idea that this is 0 degrees. Um, I'll put it up here so you can see that's the starting part. If I make it all the way over here, that's 180 degrees. And then if I make it all the way around, it's going to be 360 degrees. Notice I'm not labeling the y-axis. Don't need the y-axis. You're either going to do 0, 180, or 360. Now, in this case, I should know it's going to be less than 180. <clears throat> so when I'm finding my direction, the first thing I need to find is what is this angle? That's not going to be my answer, but it's going to lead me to my answer. Well, since I know the opposite side and the adjacent side, I can find theta by doing the inverse tangent of my opposite over my adjacent. So I'm going to do the inverse tangent of negative 7 thirds. And when I do that, I get about negative 66.8. So theta equals negative 66.8 degrees. Here's what that means. If I type that, that in my calculator, I get negative 66.8. That means I'm doing 180. And that negative says, hey, hey, it's really a minus sign. It's going to be 180 minus 66.8. So when I'm looking at that, I need to keep that in mind. And so that would be my direction would be 100. You think that would be 13.2 degrees. And so I'm looking at that. Should make sense. Because if I go from standard position, I'm past the 90, I'm not at the 180. And I would do the 180, I mean, if this angle right here is 66.8 uh, degrees, I would do 180 minus that to get that angle. So there's my direction. All the others follow the same idea. Once I get component form and I graph it and I do the magnitude, the direction is going to follow in. But the idea is you have to get to component form. So I'm not going to draw the point 2, 3 on the here and the point negative 4, negative 1 here because that this graph is meant for the component form. But there's no harm in just quickly sketching it and visualizing it. If this is 2, 3, and this is negative 4, negative 1, do you see I'm going down and to the left, which means I'm going to be in the third quadrant. 
So if I want component form, it is really your slope formula. You're going to take x2 minus x1, where you end the terminal, which is negative 4 for the x, minus where you started, which is 2. So if I do negative 4 minus 2, I'm going to get negative 6. If I do negative 1, y2 minus y1, minus 3, I'm going to get negative 4. That's your component form. Notice, third quadrant. So let's do that one. Uh, negative 6, negative 4, so I plot that point. Starting at the origin, let's go in that direction. There's your vector, there's your graph, that's it, you're done. That's what it means to graph a vector. Print standard position and standard form. From component form, is start at the origin, go towards the component form. Now if I want the magnitude, fancy way of saying, find the hypotenuse. So I'm going to go to the left. 6, that's negative 6. I'm going to go down. 4, that's negative 4. And so in that case, the Agrarian Theorem will help me find the C. So I'm going to do the square root of negative 6 squared, which is 36. Negative 4 squared, which is 16. Uh, that would be the square root of 52. And if I have the square root of 52, that is about, oops, sorry about that, about 7.2. That is your hypotenuse. To find the direction, again, same exact labels as before. I'll put 0 up here. I'll put 1 up here. I'm ignoring 90 and 270 because all of our angles go to the x-axis. And I'll come around here and say, hey, if it makes it all the way around, it's 360. Well, this one looks like it's beyond 180. I mean, it's, if I look at the direction, the direction goes to 180, and it goes slightly further. It goes about this much further, further, theta. So I need to find out what that direction is. So theta is the inverse tangent of my opposite side, negative 4 over negative 6. And so if I do the inverse tangent of negative 4 over negative 6, it's really like positive 4 over positive 6. And I'm going to get about 33.7 degrees. That doesn't mean that's your direction. That 33.7 means that's what you get here. So I have to take 180. Look at that. Notice how that's a positive 33.7. So I have to take the 180 and I need to add that 33.7 to it. So that would be about 213.7 degrees. That's what we're working with. So does make sense, doesn't it? I'm beyond 180, so I'm going to have to go down and add that to it. All right, let's look at this one. The point of form. Ooh, it's IJ. That's intimidating there. But realize that this is really your horizontal, and this is really your vertical. So component form is really 2, negative 3. Done. Um, so before I look at the graph here, figure out which of these is the hardest to put in component form. And in my opinion, it is just my opinion, though, is I think it's harder to do part B, given coordinates. And then i got to do math and do slope formula. If it's ij form, it looks intimidating, but it's really just 2, negative 3, whatever your coefficients are. So if I plot 2, negative 3, notice what quadrant I'm in. I plot 2, negative 3. That's going to start at the origin. Remember, direction of rays matter. This is 0 degrees. This is 180 degrees, because we are going to go towards the direction anyway, so I might as well fill it in, and then I'm going to draw my right triangle to get the direction. So 2, negative 3. There we are. Well, if I want my magnitude... I'm going to go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus negative 3 squared, that would be 4 plus 9, so that's the square root of 13, which is approximately 3.6. Direction, keep this in mind. It is in the fourth quadrant, so it's going to be bigger than 270, but smaller than 360. Um, it's not quite at 360. Um, I'm going to have to remove whatever this angle is. Whatever that angle is, I have to remove it. And so we're going to keep that in mind. So I need to find this angle, and I'm going to subtract it from 360. So if I do this, and I'm going to do inverse tangent, remember tangent, another way of thinking of slope, and that's really what the vectors are, of your opposite side, negative 3 halves. And if I do the inverse tangent of negative 3 halves, in this case, I get about 56.3 degrees. Now, that is not direction. The direction is everything put together. It's all the way here. That doesn't mean I'm going to do 270 plus. No, you're not doing 270. I'm in the fourth quadrant. When you're in the fourth quadrant, you do 360. And I apologize, it should be a negative 
uh, you type it in your calculator. And I say that because I would do 360 minus that. So if I do 360, that negative means I'm subtracting. In that case, I'm going to get 303.7 degrees, which now that makes sense because I'm in the fourth quadrant. That's really what you were doing in the first problem, is you were working with three different vectors. You were working with it in component form, you were working with it in coordinate form, you were working with it in ij form. The bottom line is draw them, which means put them in component form, start at the origin, so that way it's easier to get the magnitude and the direction. All right, so find and write the following vectors in component form. All right, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I know this is R. So I'll put these off to the side. So this is going to be my R equals. Um, the next one is G for this one. So G is, no, U, U is negative 6, negative 4. So I know U is negative 6, negative 4. And the last one is G. Hey, it spells rug. And then we have 2, negative 3. That way I don't have to keep scrolling up. I'll just slide these all as I keep going through it. So here we go. Um, 3G, and I'm going to write it out, 3 times G, so 3 times 2, negative 3. And I'm going to add 2U. So I'm going to add 2 times negative 6, negative 4. Order of operations. So I'm going to scale it first. Then I'm going to combine my horizontals, and I'm going to combine my verticals. And there's my answer. So the 6 and negative 12, I mean, those are both horizontal shifts. Combine them. The negative 9, negative 8, those are both vertical shifts. Combine them. All right, so let's look at the next one. We'll slide this one over and see what we need. Negative 3 R. That one's not bad. Negative 3 times R, so that would be negative 3 times negative 3, 7. Scale it, so that would be 9, negative 21. And that's it. Um, for u, you know what I'm going to do? I already have u written down here. So I'm just going to say for u is negative 24, uh, negative 16. That's for u. Minus 5r, that would be minus a negative 15 and a 35. I'm subtracting. So really, I like to think of it as you're adding a negative. So I'm going to distribute this. And so I'm really adding a 15 and a negative 35. So in that case, I have 24 plus, no, negative 24 plus 15. That would be a negative 9. I have negative 16 minus, it looks like, negative 35. So I have negative 51. And so there's that one. You could just think of it as negative 24 minus a negative 15. You could think of it as negative 16 minus a 35, and that gives you the answer. All right, so there's number one, completely done. Um, I imagine D was a lot easier because it's like distributing and combining like terms. You know, A, B, and C should have been more difficult, particularly B and C. Um, but the idea is draw the picture and go back to the Pythagorean theorem. And that's going to help you with it. Go back to the idea of degrees. Where is it around the x-axis and y-axis? All right. Determine the component form of the vector with a magnitude of 10 units and the direction of 240. So hold on. I probably need to draw this. And so even though there's no graph here for me, I'm going to draw it. So I'm going to draw, and I know it's 240 degrees, but I'm just going to draw an x-axis. I don't care about the y-axis. So this is 0. This is 180. So if I want 240, it's not quite in the fourth quadrant. Um, this can be about going down this direction, wouldn't it? So wouldn't this be 240 degrees if I were to think about it? So let's just focus on that being 240. How does that help me? Well, if that whole thing is 240 degrees, we've been drawing right triangles. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my right triangle here. And we do know that this magnitude is 10. That's helpful. Um, if I were to think about it like an axis, um, this is really going to the left. So that's a negative x. This is really like going down. That's a negative y. If only I could find out what this angle was. If I could find out what that angle was, I could use right triangle trig to find the x and then do right triangle trig again to find the y. And the good news is I do know what that angle is because the whole angle is 240 up to the x-axis. 
is going to be 180, so this has to be 60. 180 plus 60 would be the 240. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up two different equations. My x, horizontal, is related to cosine because it's my adjacent side. Even think about it. I know my hypotenuse. I want to find x, which is adjacent. So I can say the cosine of my 60 degrees is equal to negative x over 10. So that'd be negative x equals 10 times the cosine of 60 degrees. Good news, cosine 60 degrees is 1 half. So negative x equals 5. x should equal negative 5. And lo and behold, it's negative, just like we said it was going to be. Now, if I want to find the y value here, that's my opposite side. And I know my hypotenuse. So I'm going to usually do the same idea, but I'm going to use sine. I'm going to say, hey, the sine of 60 degrees is my opposite side, which is a negative y over my hypotenuse, which is a 10. Hey, hey, look at that. Negative y equals 10 sine of 60 degrees. I wonder if we're leading into something with this. Uh, we will in the next section. So if I do that, I'm going to have about negative y equals positive 8.7. But if I divide by negative 1, I get negative 8.7. There are your components. Ah, but that's not my answer. Don't stop there. Determine the component form. Negative 5, negative 8.7. Isn't that what would get me to this point right here is to go to the left, um, 5, and to go down, negative 8.7? So this is going back to right triangle trig, but this time we don't know our size, but we do know our magnitude, which allows us to use cosine and sine. Um, question 3 is actually the same setup to get more practice with it. Um, if I have 135 degrees, so here is my x-axis, I'll at least just do this. Um, so I don't focus on 90 and 270, but I can see my starting point here. And 135 degrees would be going in this direction. And so here is 135 degrees. But that's not what I want. I always want the right triangle in the quadrant. So I'm going to go to the right triangle to the x-axis. Well, the x-axis over here is 180 degrees. So this has to be 45 degrees. Uh, magnitude is 18. Well, hold on a second. Let's label again. Um, this is a negative x. It's going to the left. This is a positive y because it's going up. I wonder if I can use the same setup. I wonder if I can do, hey, the cosine of 45 degrees is the adjacent, which is x, over my hypotenuse, which is 18. And you know what? I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to say, hey, you know what? The sine of that 45 degree angle, and maybe, don't forget the negative x there um, is going to be your y over your 18, the opposite over the adjacent. So let's see what happens. Negative x equals 18 cosine of 45 degrees. And in this case, a y equals 18 sine of 45 degrees. Now, why am I doing them both at the same time? Um, this leads into the next lesson, is we're going to learn that there's a relationship to your x-coordinate with the magnitude, and there's a relationship with your y-coordinate with the magnitude. So notice our magnitude was 10 and number 2, and our, forget about negatives, but it was like 10 cosine of your angle. Our magnitude was 10 for number 2, and it was 10 sine of the angle for your y. Isn't that the, kind of the same thing I'm doing down here in number 3? It's you know, my magnitude cosine of the angle, my magnitude sine of the angle for x and y, respectively. I wonder if that's interesting, if we've kind of gone through and done that before. So let's see. If I look at this, I'm going to have about negative... 12.7 would be the answer because I'd get um, negative x equals 12.7. So x equals negative 12.7. Now that's the answer for x, not the answer for the problem. And by the way, cosine and sine of 45 degrees are the same because it's isosceles, so it'd be 12.7. So the component form would be negative 12.7 comma 12.7. So that's what we're dealing with here. So that was uh, two and three. You have a problem on your notes um, in 622 where we dealt with this, very similar to it. So if you need something else to refer to, you can refer to that one. Now, number four, um, to kind of go through this, it's walking you through a treasure hunt in a way. I mean, uh, Janet's parents took her phone away and hid it, um, and they want to get her to find it again. So notice I have bolded, starting at the house. You notice what's bolded? The house starting at the origin. So starting point, origin. It's like I'm trying to get you to th think about component form. Now this is a little bit different. 
Um, this one, we, if you look, we're doing step one there, step two, step three, step four. It's like stacking vectors. So I'm going to be adding them. Now, I'm going to read the whole thing as I go through. Um, and I look at this before I even start. Hey, Jan found a message, the magnitude and direction of the, hey, look at that, it's bolded, resultant vector. Um, remember, resultant vector is just a fancy way of us saying combine the vectors. So I know I'm going to combine. Um, look at that. Uh, number one, go north five, go east two. What's the component form of that direction? I mean, look at number two. What's the component form of that direction? What's, so, I mean, I'm thinking I'm going to have to combine these to get that resultant. Um, and then once I get that resultant, it uh, looks like the result vector is the house. It's from the house to where Janice's phone was found. Um, I gave you a new graph there. It looks like down below to graph it. Magnitude, direction. That's kind of very similar to what we've been dealing with here. So, okay. Um, I just need to keep in mind that I'm going to be stacking the vectors because we'll do the first one and I'll, I'll color code it. We have the origin starting, so let's do blue for this one. Go north five meters and go east two. So that'd be about right here. So boom, 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 boom. Now, that doesn't mean five two is the component form. I tricked you on the way I wrote that. Um, component form is left right movement first, then vertical movement. From there, all right. From this location, right there, she goes west, 7 meters, and then south, 3 meters. So let's do that one in purple. So from there, going west, 7, so that put me here, and then it says south, 3. So that would put me 1, 2, 3, right there. So let's get rid of this. Boom, gone. All right, so from this location... Not eraser. From this location, she is going down this direction. That's step two. What is west seven, south three in component form? That's negative seven, negative three. All right, so next one is green. From there, all right, hold on. From where she stopped, there we are. That's where our starting is for this part. From where she, uh, go east nine meters, south eight all right so east nine meters that put me here and then south eight i think that put me here so let's get rid of this let's just kind of make sure i went right five and then i went right four that is nine i went down two and then i went down six yep so i have here 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 there she is boom 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 all right now what is this movement in component form east nine so that's positive South 8, that's negative. All right. We need to do another one. Uh, we will do that one in red. From that location. Hold on. From that location. That new location. That's where we're starting. Go north 1 meter. That put me here. And go to the right. 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Our left 12. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Put me right there. Let's just make sure that's 4 and 8, which is 12. So let's get rid of these so I don't accidentally look at it. So from there to here, boom, boom. Now, what are these directions? So what is north 1, west 12? Um, it is not 1, negative 12 because you do your left, right first. Oh, sorry, I need to put it in red. You do your left, right first. So that's negative 12, 1. Then you're up, down. All right, she zigzagged all across the yard. That's so final, final, final resting place right here. This is where Janet's phone should be. That's what the problem's telling you to do. Good news. Janet could find her phone. All right, Janet, you found your phone. Now what do you do? Well, there's a message. The magnitude and direction of the resultant vector will unlock the container. So what's the resultant vector? Well, it tells you the resultant vector is from the house, which, wait a minute, was right here. We started there um, to where she found her phone. So, you know what? Let me, and I'll make it a little bit thicker than the others so we can tell the difference. That would be this right here. This would be my resultant vector. So, the magnitude and direction of that is going to help me. So, what, what am I going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it. I'm going to find um, what's the component form. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So from start, she would go left eight, 
down one, two, three, four, five. And then she would go down five. So it looks like her component form is negative eight, um, negative five. That's really good news. Now, why did I give you this over here? Um, I don't want to redo all my calculations on this. There's so much sloppiness over here. I don't want to, I don't want to find my magnitude and my direction on that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this. I know it's down here. I'm going to redraw. This is negative 8. This is negative 5. And I want to find my magnitude. Pythagorean theorem. So for my magnitude, I'm going to do the square root of negative 8 squared, 64, plus negative 5 squared, 25. And that's going to give me the square root of 89, which is approximately 9.4. There we are. That's the magnitude. The direction, again, keep in mind, um, direction in this case, it's always from standard position. So we know the direction is going to be bigger than 180 degrees. I need to find whatever, and I'll use green, whatever this angle is, I need to add it to 180. So that angle, I'll do it right here, is the inverse tangent. And I am not going to write down negative 5 over negative 8 because a negative divided by negative is a positive. So I'm just going to write down as the inverse tangent of 5 eighths, which is approximately 32 degrees. That doesn't mean 32 is my direction. My direction is the 180, and I went 32 degrees further. So my direction is 212 degrees. All right. This was the Janet problem. You need to realize the component forms were meant to be for the directions that she did for each step. The resultant is combining. Now, I didn't actually do something I should have done um, in the beginning. Notice I said adding. Let's just quickly look. Well, if I'm finding the resultant, let's see what happens. 2 minus 7, negative 5. Negative 5 and a positive 9 is a positive 4. A positive 4 and a negative 12 is, in fact, a negative 8, just like we said. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. Isn't that what resultant vectors mean is combine your vectors together? So the reason why I had you do the component form here and the component form here and here and on the bottom is I wanted you to realize you could combine them by adding. That's what resultant means. All right, so hopefully this clarified the 611, sorry, 621 and 622 drill day. Number five, we are saving for a later